Okay, so in this video, what I will be breaking down for you is the step by step by which you can apply for Canada visitors visa all by yourself, all by yourself without an agent. Okay, I noticed that agents do charge people 500,000, 1 million naira, 750,000, $10, $1,000, $100, dollars, and blah, blah, blah. In fact, some people have gotten scammed as a result of this. Okay, so now after this video, you'll be able to undo your visitors' visa by yourself as far as Canada is concerned. Okay, so I think one of the reasons why people are trying to move to Canada this period to visit us visa is because there is this policy right now as at the time I'm making this video whereby if you can stay in Canada, you can go to Canada to visit us visa and you are able to get an LMIA job offer within the space of that six months that you are staying in Canada, okay? Through that, you can use that, you can leverage that to settle in Canada and eventually become a permanent resident. But if you are unable to secure an LMIA job, then you will have to leave Canada after six months, okay? The maximum your visit, visitor's visa can, your visit, your visit visa can take you in Canada is six months maximum, okay? So, I think that is going on right now. Okay. So now let me quickly go to go to the IRCC website where we will begin the application. Okay. So head to your website, open the browser and enter cic.gc.ca. Okay. Don't worry, I will drop the link. In the description of this video below, cic.gc.ca. Press enter. Okay. So now click English. Click English. Click English. So now after that, you move to uh, scroll down. Let's scroll down. Come to sign in or create an IRCC secure account. You want to create an account now. Okay. You don't have an account before. If you have an account before, all what you have to do is to sign in, enter your password, your, your, your username and password, okay? So after that, click on a GCK username and password. We are creating accounts here, okay? You are not clicking here. This is where to sign in, but we are creating an account. So register for an account, okay? So let's continue. Let's continue. Click register with GCI, GC, GC key username and password. Okay, that's what you are clicking on. Okay, so here we are signing up. Click on sign up because you don't currently have an account. You are clicking on sign up. So I just did that. Okay, so it said terms and conditions, blah, 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 blah. You said I accept. Click on I accept. Okay, create your username. Okay, so my username, let me enter um, AJ Everton. Your username can be any, can be anything that you like. AJ Everton. Okay, hey, let me say AJ Everton 24. Let me save this somewhere. AJ Everton 24. That's my username. Okay. So let's say continue. AJ Everton 24, that's my user. password. Let me create a password. You enter your password. Enter your password. We are creating a password. Okay. So now the password must contain all of all. all must contain eight to 16 character, does not contain any consecutive letter from user and just make sure that all these are marked, okay, before you can continue. Now, we are we are to set recovery question in case you lost your username and password, okay? These are the questions that you will be able to use to recover your password, okay? 
So let me pick one or two questions and answer it. After I've answered, then I will click continue. So I've entered the password recovery question. So I click continue. Now, this is where I will have to enter my email. Enter my email. So this is the email that I will be using. Um, this is the email. Let me enter your email. You enter your email, then you click continue again. Okay. So now they said my username is ajvartin24 and uh, please select to continue. So we have to verify. I'm to verify my email. Okay. So I will have to go into my email inbox. There is a code that has been that has been sent there. The confirmation code. I will not input the code here. Okay. So I've entered the code sent to my email. Then I click continue. Now, uh, email recovery complete. You have successfully added email recovery. Blah blah blah. You click continue. Okay, welcome AJ Everton 24. Okay, so let's go and set up what is called two factor authentication. Okay, the purpose of this is that in case uh, anybody wants to hack your account or something, there should be another way of authenticating. So next time you want to log in, you will have to enter a code, maybe through your phone app or through your email or whatever. So let me click continue so that we can set up the two-factor authentication. It's just a security feature, okay? So you can make we can make use of our smartphone, you can use a desktop device, you can use email. I'm, I will be using email, okay? Let me set up my two-factor authentication using the email, okay? So you click I accept, enter the email here. Let me go and pick the email. So we enter the email, then you click continue. So one time password has been sent to my email. So I will have to go and check my email again, okay? For me to proceed. So let me go and do that. So I just enter the code, then I click continue. Okay, good. So now here we are right now, we, you will have to copy this and save it somewhere, okay? The purpose of this is for you to be able to recover your password anytime you lost your password, okay? So make sure you copy and save it somewhere, okay? So now, after you have done that, click this, mark this box, mark this box that says, yes, I have securely recorded and stored the code, then click continue. Yes, so the two-factor authentication has been set up, then you click continue. Okay, terms and condition, just scroll down, click I accept. Good, okay, so now, this is where you are now, we are still setting up the account, okay? So this is where you have to fill in your name, your name, James, James Bond. My name is James Bond, for instance. So the email address we are using, let me go and get that. Okay, James Bond email, prefer language, education, English. Then you click continue. So now we have to set up these security questions again. Okay, just for the recovery to be able to recover, to recover our accounts in case there is any lost in the password or username or in case there is a there is a suspicious activities around this account so let's go and fill up this question just enter security questions that you know that you can remember because we always ask you to authenticate that you are the one trying to log into your account okay so let me feed feed that up and i'll be back So I just fill all the questions and then I click continue, okay? Now you see it's very simple, very simple, very simple. Wow, so now James Bond account. <laughs> I am James Bond. 
<laughs> so this is my account where I will always apply for whatever visa I want to apply as far as Canada is concerned. This is my profile. This is my profile. This is my profile right now. Currently, I have no application. I have no pending application. If I have any pending application, then it will show here. Okay, it will show here. So now, what we want to do now is to apply for our visitor's visa. So this is where you will come to. On that start an application, you will click apply to come to Canada. Okay, apply to come to Canada. I said, please enter your personal reference code. You don't have any currently. Okay, this is your fresh this is your fresh application. So you don't have any. So this is what you will do. You come down and uh, under determine your eligibility and apply online, just click visitor visa. Okay, visitor visa study and uh, work permit. Just click it. Then you want to check if you are eligible to apply. So you answer these questions. Okay, be sincere enough to the best of your to the best of your knowledge, answer those questions. So he said, what would you like to come to do in Canada? I said, visit. Okay, how long are you planning to stay in Canada? Mm, I said, temporarily less than six months. Okay, select the code that match one of the, your passports. So you look for your country, like me now, I'm in Nigeria. So I will look for Nigeria. This is Nigeria NG, that's the code that match my country. What is the current? What is your current country of residence, okay? If you are presently in Canada, you should select Canada, okay? I'm currently in Nigeria, so let me look for Nigeria. And I will enter Nigeria. So let me, he said, do you have a family member or who is in Canada or whatever, whatever? I don't have any family member in Canada. I say no. Okay, what's your date of birth? Let me choose... Uh, let me choose uh, 1980. Let me enter that. Mm, let me go for 1980. Where is it? 1980. April. April. Let's say April 1. <laughs> That's my date of birth. By the way, you can save and uh, sit this, this process so that you can come back anytime you want. We are not saving, we are continuing. So you click next. You click next. So find out if you are eligible to apply. Have you lived in Canada as permanent resident or landed? We say no. I have not lived in Canada as a permanent resident before. So let me click next. Are you a lawful permanent resident of the United States of America with a valid US citizen? No. The answer is no. Click next. The network, the network is slow. Can you see it's very simple, very straightforward. What's your marital status? Let me click uh, never married single. Okay, just Select, just be sincere. If you are married, pick marriage. You might ask you some other question about your spouse, whatever. What's your province or territory of destination? If you are visiting multiple provinces or territories, territories select one in which we'll be spending most of your time, okay? So the one you'll be spending most of your time in case you are visiting more than one territories. So let me select Ontario, okay? Click next. This is your result now. Based on the information you provided, below indicate whether you may be eligible or not, blah, 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 blah. You are eligible to apply for a visitor's visa. That means I'm eligible, okay? And the application fee will cost 100 Canadian dollars, okay? You can read the rest, blah, blah, blah. Permit travel to Canada by year, whatever, whatever, and it's valid up to 10 years, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let me click continue. So we are done with the eligibility side. So let's create, let's create our personal checklist. I want to check, create my personal checklist. So you click next, continue. You can read all of these things. But because of time, I'm clicking continue. Find out if you are eligible to apply. So what is the main purpose of your visit? Okay, I will click uh, tourism. Let me click tourism, click next. 
Do you have a job in country where you currently live? Yes, I have a job. Yes. Do you own a business in the country where you currently live? Do you own it? I don't know. I don't. Do you depend on someone for financial support? No. If your own is yes, answer yes. Okay. Have you tried to travel to other country in previous 10 years? No. If you have not traveled, just say no. Okay. If you say yes, they might ask you other questions. Okay. And answer it sincerely. Answer those questions sincerely. Another one here, after clicking it says, it says, are you accompanying a family member that has status in Canada or has recently been approved to come to Canada? No. If your own is yes, say less yes. Then my own is no. Okay. Have you committed or been arrested for being charged with no? I've not been arrested. They want to see if you are a criminal. So I say let's no. Have you had the medical exam performed by RCC authorized personnel? No, I've not done any medical medical exam before. The reason why they are asking this is they want to know if they will charge you for biometric or not. Okay, since you answered no, that means you will not be charged for biometric. Do you want to submit an application for family member? Okay, the answer is no. You are submitting for yourself because you are doing this for yourself. Are you, are you giving someone access to your application? Maybe you want an agent to complete your application or you want to give an immigration lawyer or consultant to continue your application? My answer here is no. I'm not giving anybody access to this. I'm doing it by myself okay in the past 10 years have you given your fingerprints and photo biometry for an application to come to canada okay we want to know if you be charged for biometric because if you have done biometric in the past 10 years in any of the visa whatever to canada that biometric that you did can last for 10 years so you if you have done anything biometric in the last 10 years, then you will have to say no here yeah, so that you will not be charged for biometric again. Somebody like me, I've not done anything biometric in the, in the last 10 years. So I will be selecting no so that they can charge me for biometric, okay? There are fees associated with this application. Will you be paying your fee or are you fee assented? Of course, I will be paying. So you click yes, I will be paying. Are you able to make a digital copy of your documents with scanner? Yes. Are you able to make, uh, okay, it's still going, it's still coming up. Will you be paying your application fee online to pay? You use credit card, MasterCard, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Click next. Okay, so let's review all we have selected. Okay, so. These are the information we have selected. If, if you want to make any correction to any of any of the options you've selected in the in the previous uh, in the previous page, you can make correction here, okay, by clicking this pencil button. Okay, but I'm not making any correction. Then what I will do is to click continue. Okay, so this is another overview. It's just an overview. Just an overview, just click next, click continue. Okay, your document checklist now. Okay, so now you are now eligible. They have they now have your information and all of that. So now let's continue. Let's continue the application forms. You will have to download this I. IMM 5257 form, okay? This IMM form, okay? Make sure you have Adobe Reader, Adobe Reader for you to be able to access this form, okay? So let's download it. I will show you how to fill it later. So I just downloaded it. I just downloaded it. So let's go back. Let's go back. So let's go down. Um. 
So these are the places where you'll be uploading your document, your passport, your proof of uh, proof of means of financial support. Here you'll be uploading your bank account statements. You will explain how you want to sponsor yourself. You will show how you are able to gather the uh, the cash that you will need to sponsor yourself in Canada. Okay, this is where you prove yourself. Digital photo of yourself. The need purpose of travel. This is just like writing SOP in your study visa. So here you explain why you want to go to Canada, the reason why you are visiting Canada, are you coming back, what, what are the own ties, what will make you to come back, and all of that. If you are relocating with your family, you will have to, if you are visiting with your family, you will have to download this family information IMM form, okay? This IMM form, this is where you will fill the number of family that is going with you, maybe your wife, your kids, and all of that, they will ask you, their information and everything you have to fill it inside this imm form as well okay so other optional documents application for a territory temporary resident visa means outside canada okay here also you are still you are still uh, explaining in details about your application to canada and then this is summary of the fee that you will be paying that you'll be paying to Canadian immigration. So the application fee is 100 Canadian dollars and biometric fee is 85 Canadian dollars, making 185 Canadian dollars for the old application. Can you see? An agent will be charging you $1,000, $2,000, $500, $700, $500,000, $750,000. Naira. All these things, you can do them on your own without paying anybody just the same way um i'm uh, breaking it down for you by the way if in case you don't understand any of the required information here just click this question mark okay it will show you what they are requesting it will give you overview breakdown of what they are requesting what it is all about, okay? That's why you have all these question mark, okay? If I, if there is anything you don't understand, just click this, then you will be able to see what that requirement is all about. So you can never get stuck. You can never get stuck. And also, Make sure that all the files you'll be uploading, they are in PDF, they are in Adobe, they are in a JPEG format, okay? And they are of maximum size of 4 MB. If any of it is above 4 MB, then it will not be accepted, okay? So let's go and fill the IMM form that we downloaded before now. If you are gaining value from this, please go and subscribe to this channel. If you have not subscribed, let me give you just one minute to subscribe. Click subscribe button now. If you are gaining value, if you are, if you are gaining value from this so far, if you have gained value from this so far, click that subscribe button, like this video, share with family and friends so that they can also benefit with what I'm sharing here. Okay, so let's head over to the to the uh to the IMM form. So after you have downloaded this, just go and open it with the Adobe Reader, okay? Open it with the Adobe Reader. When you open it with the Adobe Reader, this is what you will see. So now, they will ask you for the UCI number. UCI number, you don't have a UCI number because this is your first time of applying. You don't, you don't have anything UCI number. So, uh, I want everything. Select the language that you understand. I pick English. Visa requested. Just come down here. Then you select visitor visa. Okay. They are just asking you basic, basic information here. Full name. Enter your name. Enter your family name, sex, male or female, date of birth. Just normal way of filling form. That's all. 
just normal way of filling form. Place of birth, country. Okay, so just fill the form. There is a place where they normally ask if you have been denied visa before. Make sure you mention it if you have been denied visa before. If you know the reason why they deny you visa in the past to any country, mention it and explain the reason. If you don't know the reason, no problem. Okay. If you don't say it, it might it might it might become an issue for you in the future. Okay, it can be an issue in your processing. So just fill this from language, passport number, country of issue, country, country of issue, national identity documents, okay, contact information. Just fill the form, fill the form, fill the form, fill the form, fill the form. So less education, okay, the school, the town, and the rest, employment. So fill the form. So background information, within the past two years, have you or a family member ever had tuberculosis? Answer your question, answer the question, just fill in your details. Okay, so uh, I'm looking for where the, you see here, they said, have you ever been refused or, have you ever been refused a visa or permit, deny entry or that to leave Canada or any other country? or territory, answer, be specific. If you have been denied to start to Australia, to anywhere, to US before, you have to state it here, okay? There is no issue with that. They just want to know and know your background, okay? If you don't say it, it might be an issue. So after you have filled the form and you are good to go, just click on scroll down, scroll down, signature dates, scroll down, click validate. If you click validate, it might be asking, telling you that there are places that you've not filled the form properly. So it will indicate it with a red, with a red, where the red rectangle. So make sure you fill it properly that there is no any red rectangle. Then you click validate. From there, you can go back to, you can go back here, then upload your I. M I M M M form, okay. Upload it, then you continue your application. Moreover, you can also always exit this question, this uh, form, this questionnaire, and always come back to it. You can always come back to this page, log in the same way you got here. Then you continue your application. It's not a must that you finish everything in one day. It's not a must that you finish everything in one day. So you have grace of 60 days to complete this application. Maybe there is this particular form that you don't have. You can quickly go and get it, log in again, continue, upload the form, upload the, um, upload the document, then you proceed. Okay, so you have 60 days to complete all of this. Okay, so now let me, actually this video is not supposed to be this long, but let me point out this. So you might be asking, how much is the proof of fund? How much do I need to have in my account? Unfortunately, or let me say luckily, Canadian Immigration did not specify any amount. This is their website. I am on their website right now. Officially, they never specify any specific amount. They only require you to have enough money, enough money, and that money can be in form of cash. Can you see? Cash, certified check, bank draft, money order in an amount large enough. Can you see? Large enough to cover all reasonable expenses, okay, to be incurred during the stay in Canada. Okay, you can go through all of this. You can go through all of this. You can go through, just Google, just put into Google, uh, temporary residence, proof of fund, and financial support, and put Canada visit officer. It will, it will bring you here. Okay, just go with this. You will see what I'm talking about. Okay, you may consider a combination of any of the following documents as evidence of ability to support an intended visit. The list of is not exhaustive, but demonstrate various resources document that may be presented. 
So these are the documents you have to be present as evidence that you have this money. So they say bank statements, deposit book, applicant or show accumulated savings. Just go through it and understand better. Okay. Another uh, another place that we want you to go is to check if you want to know how to write your how to write your what is it called? Let me come here. How to write your uh, how to write your purpose of travel very well. How to write all this all this uh, purpose of travel very well. How to write all this very well. Just come here. Google Google this temporary resident eligibility and admissibility consideration. Google it. You will see what they want to see in your application so that. When the visa officer is reviewing your application, they will be able to see what they expected you to write, what it is expected of you in your application. So now, can you see, just read this? Let's let's check one or two. Let's check one or two sections. Is there what's the purpose of your trip? Things to consider. What will the person be doing in Canada? What are the applicants' plans for visiting Canada? Are the plans well thought or thought out, or are they frivolous? So they just want to know, okay, how long will you be staying in Canada? Things to consider. What is the duration of the visit? Why are you why are you staying six months? Why not three months? Why not two months? Why not one week? Why six months? You have to be able to convince them in your purpose of travel writing, okay, where you write your purpose of travel in your in your in your application form okay so considering application situation in the home country and the purpose of travel ties to canada or country of residence what ties do you have with canada things to consider who invited the person to canada is there proof of an invitation does the person have family in canada if so what is their immigration status okay these are things that you have to put into writing and put them let them be well explained and comprehensively written. Okay, so you can go through all of these and see how you can come up with a convincing application in your in your uh, in your visitor visa application. Okay, hope you have gained one or two things. If you have not subscribed to this channel, go and subscribe right now. Share this video with friends and family. All the links to the Canadian immigration website, I will drop them in the description below this video so that you can explore them and see everything that I'm talking about. Then you'll be able to undo your visitor's visa by yourself without giving, without giving money, without giving money to any agent. Okay, without giving money to any agent. Okay, go, okay. Go ahead and subscribe right now. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Thank you for staying to this moment. See you in my next video. Bye.